So I'm here to talk about the crane shot. One of the things that I always do when I teach an intro course is I talk about the kind of crane shots that are essentially using cranes that have levers, okay? And I always say, imagine that your hand is the camera and that your arm with its elbow is the crane and the crane can then move in a free-floating direction. There's another kind of crane that's less elbow-like, um, that is more like a boom mic in that it is, uh, you know, a pole that can just move. And it's sometimes hard to tell which is which, but you don't, you would use the great elbow mechanism of the crane um, to create more movement than you did with the sort of boom mic setup of the crane. And when you see something that's a mixture of a pan and a track forward, or it's a high angle over the set, or the location, unless it's shot from a building top, it's probably using a crane. So my favorite period of the crane shot is actually the 30s and in France. They used crane shots to move the camera in relationship to the characters' movements on the little bridges that cross the canals, on uh, various aspects of their movement in the city in really beautiful ways. And then in uh, Les Enfants de Paradis, The Children of Paradise, it's taken to a whole other level with depicting the street scenes of crowds that uh, occur in front of the uh, working class uh, theaters in Paris. The other thing to think about is that because cranes are expensive to set up, they're not used as much anymore. So we're getting fewer crane shots and what is being substituted is sort of steady cam movement. But the crane shot actually gives you this greater dimensionality to the movement and the ability to look at characters from above or move with them as they move through different levels of uh, a city and or a set.